I came this far, I invested all this money, um, and now I have this hit record. I want to take it as far as I can take it without, you know, using someone else's mm. um, celebrity platform. He wanted to put it out immediately. And I was like, just can let me right. let me think about it. And then obviously with him doing Super Bowl and like all this stuff now, it probably would have been a good look as far as like aesthetically and financially, but I needed to do it on my own. Right. Just to know that I could. Big Boys Big Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. I've been waiting on this one. Woo-hoo. Money long, yes. money strong up in here. Money long, welcome to the neighborhood. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Let me tell you, hon, my daughter wanted to uh, come up here and be out of school today. Uh-uh. Yeah, for real. For me? It, yes, Aww. for you, Aww. like, for real, for real. Like, and, and I've had this conversation with others, man, but when my daughter either likes something, introduce you to something, it's, it goes like diamond, like 10 times platinum in the house. And that was, especially with with ours, ours, that was one of those that was in my household, I think, before a lot of people knew. And that's because my daughter, how she takes temperatures on certain records, man, mm-hmm. I just, I, I know they're going to go. My daughter's 15. Okay. But she's been like this they be knowing. for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and she's all over the place when it comes to music, though. Were, were you always into music? Yes. Really? So, like, the TRL Countdown, yes. mm-hmm. VH1 Video Wake Up, 106 in Park, like, yeah. So, did you, you always watched, were you always kind of, did you always want to be in, in entertainment? Did you, like, write poetry or anything like that? Oh, I've been writing songs since I was eight. Damn. Um, and, I, of course, you know, you're you watching these superstars on TV every mm-hmm. week, and I never thought that I could actually do it. Right. But of course I wanted to. Where did you grow up at? Florida. Okay, so Florida, Florida, we, we get a lot out of Florida. You know what I'm saying? And you, and it was especially our stories, we get a lot of Florida men, Florida women. We'll talk about that <laughs> later. But growing up in Florida, was anybody else in your household? Were, were anybody else into the business or in, in into music? My mom is a singer. She okay. can sing really well. Um, and I just recently connected with Flo Rida. You know, we're cousins. Right. Oh. Yeah. Did you know that? Oh. So you know how your mama be like, yeah, you know, um, Larry on your, your your granddaddy's side. It's like it's like mom, I don't know them people, but she used to say like you're related to him, and then finally this Christmas, uh, we all got together and was like, oh, we did like um, <laughs> Top Golf. Um, he rented out the theater. We saw Color Purple. I did a game night. It was amazing. It was like um, back in the days when growing up on the farm, we used to have like. Family Damn. reunions. Or I have a huge family. So, yeah, it was really fun. So he's my cousin. You said growing up on the farm? Yes. So you grew up on the farm. So when you say Florida, we're not talking about, like, the streets of Miami where no. you see. Oh, so you. We're talking about pet hog, chickens, geese, sugar Damn. cane, orange trees. How does a, a little girl on a farm have big, big enough dreams to think? Because, you know, because now with social media, you kind of press play. You could be everywhere. You know, but how does one that's on a farm with like hogs and all that, you just dream big? Um, I was a little Delulu, yeah. Right, yeah, hello. I, I was like, I'm going to be all a be, star. And I, I, really, I mean, I just sang everywhere for everything, funerals, weddings, um, the national anthem. I didn't really have a choice. My mm. mom was like, get up there. Oh, so, <laughs> mom, so mom's was with it. Yeah, so she I understood. Mean, Did she know that you wanted to have success I've always been like, Mom, can I can you can you take me to this play? You know, oh. I um I wanna audition for the school play, I wanna do this. Can you sign me up for ballet, you know, classes? Oh. Um, so I was always interested in it. And she would entertain me up until a certain point when it started to get really expensive. And she was like, Girl, listen, you're gonna have to go to college or something. Damn. You need a backup plan. And I remember the day I um refused. I was like, I'm not going to college, Mom. And I slammed my door. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, she's going to kill me. And I, I waited, and she didn't come in the door. And then she just left me alone after that. So that's when I started uploading videos of me singing on YouTube. I was in, like, 2004. Mm. Um, and then, obviously, before YouTube was like what it is today. And then I started blowing up on there. So from 2004 to 2008 uh, is when I got the attention of an a from Capitol Records and the rest is history. You know what's crazy about that is even when you say 2004, we're talking about 20 years ago just on that. Yep. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's a lot of tuition into the school of experience. That's a lot of learning. And I'm pretty sure at some point, Money Long, you had to think like, oh, I'm on. Like, um, this is it. You know what I'm saying? You always think that. And then mm-hmm. you're like, oh, that didn't change yeah. my life. I thought it would. Um, yeah, I thought that a few times. And then when it actually did happen, it was very like, wait, right. is, this, is this for real? Right. <laughs> you know? Because it happened at least five times in my life. So when you say it happens five times in your life, what keeps you going? I just will have this little niggling feeling right. of like, if you give up. Maybe next week it might happen, mm-hmm. and then you're going to be mad. Um, and then I would always be like, what you going to do, girl? Right. Work at Target? Nothing right. wrong with that. Right. But it just wasn't for me. What about Walmart? Um, no, Target's a little better. You know, I actually did though. work at Walmart. <laughs> See? Yeah, it wasn't. So you had to do some this and that. Why you knew that you wanted. I had a couple of jobs that only lasted for one day. Right, right. Because like, you always um, had music or always new entertainment. No, I just wasn't trying to do it. Like, right. I can't do this for the rest of my life, unpacking these boxes. Right. So did you really work at Walmart? For one day. Oh, okay. So you yes. knew. Hey, man, what was it? Tyler, the creator that worked there. What did he work FedEx, at? FedEx, I think. Yeah. FedEx. And, yeah. yeah. And he Starbucks. said they even told him, like, Tyler, the creator, they like uh, this ain't for you man yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know this ain't for you you know what i'm saying and, and i think it was another one was it starbucks that he went in starbucks on yeah. somebody oh, yeah. yeah but but there's just some times where you know like okay i understand that i gotta do this before i get that you know un- until it kind of balances out or all the weight comes over on this side yeah but at some point you do think like like damn you know is it gonna happen and not questioning but the it being realistic that so many people want the same dream and it's like, what do you do that that's going to make it different and a, and a reality for you? I think I always knew like, I'm going to do this forever, mm-hmm. whether I get paid for it or not. Um, and I was always very much optimistic to the point of like, is she okay? Like what's wrong with her? Why is she so happy? Um, and so like when I was in those service jobs, working at restaurants, um, hosting, and I worked at, like, Victoria's Secret. I was always very happy. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, this is just a stepping stone. I just saw something, an interview with uh, Coleman Domingo, and he was saying something similar where it's just like, I understand that this is just the life of an artist. You know, Um, eventually we're going to get to the place where I can support myself off of my art but until then, I'm going to keep doing what I need to do to keep the lights on so I can keep pursuing my dreams. And when you say you keep pursuing your dreams, it's, it's obvious you did. And it's, and that's a long road when we think about the years. And then when you get in, and how was it just writing for other people? Did it feel like, you know, especially when you know you got the talent to do it yourself, and you started off wanting to be in front of the mic, be the the you know microphone one and be the singer. Mm-hmm. How is it when you go from that to like oh okay I'm gonna you, and you say if you work at Walmart of course and other places at at restaurants of course you could write something for somebody else. Was that a little different for you though? Um, I was I was drinking the Kool Aid, you know, like you know people telling me giving me advice. Um, so I'm writing. That's where the money's at. You know, if, if you if you get a number one. Um, people will treat you different. Mm-hmm. It'll be easier for you to do your artistry. So I believed it, and I did. And I got another number one in country and another number one over here in pop. And, and it still wasn't right. moving the needle. I'm like, hold on a minute now. Y'all told me one thing. The math ain't math. I right, right. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I like this no more. Um, and I did that for about eight years before I started to get kind of fed up. Mm-hmm. Oh. I started looking for answers. Never was like feeling like, that should be me, like, never. Right. But I was like, oh, that's not what y'all said was going to happen. So now mm-hmm. when do I get to take a break and do my artistry? Because you really have to focus. Right. You know, you can't be jumping around and jumping in other people's world and then expect to be able to create your own. And so I really literally had to, like, unplug from mm-hmm. the business. I had to quit and disappear um, in 2018. Isn't that scary, too, though? Wow. It was so scary, yeah. Yeah. Because it quit and disappear, and it's crazy because when it works out or when we see it, 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 it happening, it's like, oh, that was a great decision. But it's got to be scary to say, man, I got this much momentum, and I'm in these rooms, and I got these placements, and, and I want to And you got people in your ear like, but you're so good at it. Yeah. Like, okay, but that doesn't mean I'm happy here. Like, 
I've been doing this for almost a decade. It's time for a new chapter. There was never a part of you, Money Long, where you were like, but damn, that that's my song. No. You know, because I heard you had crashed the Fifth Harmony Worth It video and you was trying to like do the dance steps and all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like, give it to me. I'm worth it. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I never. So you knew how to detach even though those songs came from a certain place? I mean, maybe it was just like my years in the service industry. Mm -hmm. You just, when you're there to, because my, my philosophy is this, like everybody has their part to play. Mm -hmm. And as a songwriter, I understood whether they tell you this or not, the song is the most important thing. Without a song, right. you don't have nothing else. You don't have this. You don't have a, the stage. You don't have video. You don't have anything. And so I was very much happy to be able to contribute 150% um, my best to the part that I'm great at, right. which is writing those songs. If it's not, if there's nothing else I could do, I know how to write them dang on songs. So... I just looked at it as a way to, like, I don't know, still have a voice, um, even though I didn't have the courage yet or the finances yet. Or there's so much that goes with being an artist that you just mm. don't know until you see it. Nobody can really tell you. So I also gained a lot of intel gotcha. being around the Rihannas and the... Fifth Harmonies and Chris Browns and Hey, I love how Madonna. she just learned that like I it ain't know. no thing. Yeah, no thing. <laughs> you know, you know, you know that. Rihanna and Fifth Harmony. You know, you, know, you, you know what I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> you know, that's when you know. Like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I might know a little. Right, something. yeah. But, and, and, but it, what's wild about that, too, <clears throat> is that once you say, I'm going to stop, and you did say, yeah, it does get a little tricky, you know, do you change from to money long then like does that name change come or when does the name change come so, because that's even scary because there's an equity <clears throat> in in your government yes but um you know and i did experience it on this side right once i did uh once it became known that money long is the same girl that's been hanging around in the studio for 15 years um where people are looking for validation. How are you so good out of nowhere? How are you doing this? Who do you know? What What is the secret? And so um, what I didn't want is in the beginning of Money Long for people to just go, oh, that's just Priscilla, right. and not pay attention to the quality of the content. And so by the time people realized I was the same girl, the song was already blowing right. up everywhere. You already it was too had late. Us. It was too late. Nobody could stop it. And know? why the name change and, and why to Money Alone? I think I had a lot of PTSD um, attached to that name. And mm. just like, you know, people think they know you and they treat you a certain way um, because of maybe how you allowed yourself to be treated before. Right. And you were young, young. I, was, I started when I was 19, yeah. 18, 19. So, you know, even as a woman, I'm growing and I need certain things. And um, I just understood. Plus, I did a country album under my government name in 2018. And that was a horrible experience. Wow. It, it was before, like, Lil Nas X. And right. I made, like, R&B country hybrid. And they just were not receiving me. And you know what's crazy about that? We see it so much now. now. Yeah. yeah, so I was the first person <laughs> yeah, to go to man. Nashville and Damn. try to do that. And everybody was like, bless your heart, that's not country music. And they would never say why. Right. But right. we know. Oh, yeah. And what's funny oh, yeah. is... Um, you got long nails. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Long and nails and big and both earrings. Yeah, and they're attached to, you know, brown skin. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. um, but I went to the same high school as Jake Owen. Mm. And he's a huge country star. Right. So I would be like, well, why? Why? isn't in country music and they would just kind of like mm. get red in the face and right. just be like it just isn't and then a couple years we later you hear boom, the elephant from here you know what I mean? yeah 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 um and then a couple years later Lil Nas X and then there's Sam Hunt and yeah. you know Morgan Whalen hey dude around. have you heard that Dax and uh and Darius yep, Rucker Dax, yep. oh my gosh man yeah <laughs> Jimmy Allen so it's just like you know everything happens the way it's supposed to mm -hmm. um and I moved on but I realized, like, okay, I'm going to have to change my name if I want to actually break through. Um, and when I first started, there was no pictures of me. It was just a name. So um, I was able to kind of 
And that's the money long thing where you say no pictures. We're talking speaking of money long. Yes. Okay. There was there was nothing. There was no if you typed in money long in Google, nothing came up. Um, and so I was like, well, this is perfect. You know, by the time people realize that I'm on to something, it'll be too late. The world will have already accepted it. Yeah, but like I say, that's gotta be like, you know, that's those are different and scary moments. And like I said, there's equity. There, there's there's already a brand that's right there. But to kind of let certain things go or let it all go to build up, you know, then it works. It worked. And it, and, and it sounds like a genius plan as we sit here today. But I would think that that's, that's, that's like the equity I have and what I do here. Like, I don't know if you know this money long, but I used to weigh like over 500 pounds, right? And with over 500 pounds, I got gastric bypass. And over 20 years ago. So being over 500 pounds, I used when I knew I was like, man, I'm going to take care of my health. I'm going to get this surgery. I'm going to change my life. I also thought like, man, are you still going to be big boy? Are people still mm. going to rock with you? Are you still going to be, you know, funny, entertainment? What about if people loved you? So I had a problem with shaking a certain identity as psychologically, well. Psychologically, yeah. Yes, psychologically I did, but I was like, man, you know what? If you don't do it and if you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to be here in a year anyway yeah, and it's yeah. not going to matter. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so even though you step out on faith, even though you can't see the whole staircase, you just It was go. a little bit of that too, right? Like I said, PTSD attached to my government name and I had to just really like shed that, kill that person mm -hmm. and create this new like who is Money Long? What does she like? You know, where does she eat mm -hmm. for dinner? Like You didn't change all that, did you? No. Okay. I was, okay. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, like, yeah, No, but you I know. just started, like, owning it. Right. You know, not being ashamed to say, you know, I think I want to go get me a nice steak tonight. Why Money Long? Uh, affirmation. Um, and also, I'm, like, a huge nerd, and I was researching meditation practices and you know, elevation, frequency, all that. And I came across this story about an ancient sage named Mooney. Mm. It was spelled M-U with the two dots over it. Gotcha. N-I. And he sat for days meditating to where, like, he reached nirvana, but then they had to, like, pry his legs from... Oh, wow, from the sitting position? Yeah, because he, like, got stuck like that. But I just thought it was a really cool story. And I showed it to my husband. I was like, I, I like this name. And he was like, yeah, you should pronounce it money, though. So that's how I came up with that. Did you have any other names before you laid back on money long? Oh, my God. We ain't even going to talk about yeah. it. <laughs> I, I, I had some really bad ones. I even performed one time under another student. It was not. Be like Shaka Baker, like Shaka Khan, Anita Baker. I don't know where I was at, Big. I don't know. No, I was and I'm not going to tell you the, the name because there's footage out there. Oh, that so you don't we, want to we don't want you Googling hey, man, nothing. Yeah, you can't do nothing and leave nothing no more. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even things that you thought you not got away with, like it was something crazy, but even things where you were like, man, that was 20 years ago. You know what? Everybody wants to bring out these old, ugly ass pictures of me. Man, I don't have nothing but old, ugly pictures. And I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm so mad. Like, why? Why? Yeah. Because that's what we do now. I hate the, it. Like 2024, be. be in the rear view and what's coming up in the windshield, it's a lot of goofy stuff They'd be out like, there. I knew you when you was ugly, girl. Yeah, man. When you ain't know how to put that makeup on. With people with me, they say, I knew you since you were big. Like, mm. oh, I always knew since you was big. Now, the ugly yeah. thing that's been there. But uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, who going to say that? You know what I'm like? What, my You know what I hate, too, brother? is like when I'm moving through, uh, like, especially like this week is, is very crazy for me. And people just be like, Priscilla. Oh. And I, I'm like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> you don't know me like that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> and then I have to look like, who is that calling my name like that? Hey, man, money, long. I get it, too. People be like, Kurt. And then it's always somebody that don't know you as Kurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like my wife don't call me Kurt. You know, I have a sister that I call. I have two sisters that call me Kurt. And then my other ones just call me big. You know, two sisters that call me big. My brother Mouse call me big or baby boy. Mm. But you know what I'm saying? But yeah, like, uh, how, how's Kurt doing? Like, uh, you don't know Kurt. I don't like it. Yeah, man. I'm about to write me a song called You Don't Know Kurt. Please you stop don't it. Know. You don't, don't know do Kurt. Uh -uh. You don't know a brother uh, like me. You know what I'm saying? Let uh -huh. me know if you need a verse. Remember yeah. you said that. Yeah, all right. Well, you do that. And I need a hook.
gotcha. And I need you to write the whole thing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, do you produce too? So basically, it'll be my song. Our song. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? But you can get the presents on it. We'll talk about that later. Let's talk okay, about business right. when we get out of here. You know what I'm saying? So I can put you... Uh, you, you you're doing well, but man, we make something together. I'm out of here. Money long, money strong. Gotcha. It's, it's going to be definitely ridiculous. Now, y'all, are y'all here for the Grammys? Yes. Re- are you nominated this year? Not this, this year. But you oh. got your Grammys already, huh? I got one. So you think you're all bad? I need a couple more, though. Really, though? What yeah. do you do? Where's the one? Um, best R and B song I won last year. And where do you? Do or no, best R and B performance. Is it in the car or what do you do? No, it's in a still in the box. It's still in the box. Yeah. So you get it. You get the accolade. <laughs> you understand it, and then you move on. Well, because if I'm traveling so much, mm-hmm. I don't want to put it in my L A place and then like something happened to it. Right, especially because here, I'm not huh? here. Especially so, in L A, you know. Yeah. I would have wore that thing around my neck with a little chain it's on it. It's kind of heavy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, man. It's Does really it heavy. feel different when you have your your own as opposed to being either connected to something or even a name that already had theirs? I think it's the acknowledgement of your peers because the Grammys has done a lot of work to make sure that um, the voters are actually your peers. Mm-hmm. It's not no funny business going on. Like, if you win, it's because your friends right. and your, your, your co-writers, your collaborators... They wanted you to win. They voted for you. And so I know there was a lot of question around that in in past years, but last year was the first year that they really, like, if you're a Grammy voter, you know they they made it a specific way um, now where, like, you're only voting in the categories that you work in. It's a lot more streamlined. And so that part was the most touching to me is, like, wow, y'all really voted for me. Y'all really, like mess with me for real did you get a chance to do the acceptance speech no because my head was still in the sink i was getting my hair washed that morning i didn't know that um i was gonna win and when i was gonna win because it was during the, the pre-show gotcha so i was like when they came in there i'm getting my hair washed they're like you won girl i'm like shut up you lying and then um they showed it to me i was like oh my Cause I would have went if right, I would have. Right. <laughs> if I would have yeah. known. Yeah. yeah. But they couldn't tell me. Obviously. What is your your parents or what is your mom? What does she think about the success? She loves it. I mean, yeah. you know, there was a period of time when she was like, "Girl, you might need to hang it up." Um, As a mom, and get, and like you for know, real. You, I'm trying to tell you, you might need to go to school and get you a job. She wanted me to be Oprah. Like, she really wanted me to do like um, uh, communications major. And were you into that? Um, no, right. I always wanted to sing, but I do have a way with words and like, I'm able to carry a conversation really well. And, you know, she just always thought that I should do that. Mm. And, um, she was really trying to push it on me. And I was like, mom, I don't feel, I don't feel that in my heart. Like I gotta Damn. go for it. So now she's super supportive. Oh yeah. Um, and she's always asking me like, well, when you going to play us some of your new music? I'm like, mom. Just give me a second, okay? Has she been in the studio with you yet? A couple times. She don't really. Um, she don't. Really, she hasn't recorded anything, right? No. Okay. So when you're in there, she's not in the background going, "Oh girl." No, you know? no, no. Like, you should just let me on in there. No. She oh, okay. Are you a Virgo? I am. When's your birthday? September 14th. I'm September 8th. How you know that? Wait. Mm-hmm. Somebody told you that? I just heard that you're a Virgo. Oh, yes, I am. Yeah, if, if, if I just thought that up, like, oh, I was about you know, to say, that, that'd be scary. Oh, I'd be on. like, hey, and then I'll tell you what you have for breakfast. You'd be like, dude, this dude is crazy. <laughs> yeah, somebody watching me. So you are a Virgo. I yeah, am. Virgo pride, Virgo love. You know what, what I mean? Why do we, it's like literally every time I meet a Virgo, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, we here. And, and because <laughs> we have to. You know, I think we're the only Virgos in this room. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. And that's why so. we're so, you know. That's fine. That's why we're the best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like everybody else in the, you see, it's just me and you really on the mics too. <laughs> you know, microphone one and two. No disrespect to any non virgos in here. You know? No, so, disrespect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. well, a little disrespect. More from her. You know what I'm saying? More from her. He got to drop me to the crib today, so I don't want to give him too much mess. He, he's rolling today. So, what, what, besides the Grammys, are you working on anything right now? Just finished my album. Thank you all bad. I'm very, very What's the name of the album? Think you all bad? Can I can I say the name of the album? Uh oh. Not yet. Okay. okay. Well we do uh, what, have a what name. about now? Shaka Q she say it now? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so are you done with the album? Done. Um, I mean I would love to get like a few 
artist features before it comes out. If I don't, it's okay because it's still a really great body of work. Um, straight up and down, like some great R and B pop music. It's just like I don't know. I feel very proud. Um, I had a couple moments. Tricky Stewart is executive producing, mm -hmm. and um, I had a couple moments with him where I was just like, you know, kind of eyes watering. Like I can't believe this is my music. This is like you still trip insane. off of that. I mean, it's really good. Right. The whole body of work is like you listen to it. Is no skips. It's hard to skip a record because they all are just that good. Is making m new music is it also like kind of the gift and the curse because you do have a you know you have a catalog, you have the Grammy, you have hits. You know what I'm saying. So does that put a different pressure on you when you go into record? Or do you know how to let that go? I don't feel pressure because I know that it's not me making the songs. Mm. So it, I'm just channeling, you know. Gotcha. Um, and yeah. And then also I'm finally getting to the place where I don't have to do everything by myself. Um, I did a session with Teron Thomas, who is uh, nominated for a songwriter of the year Jesus. this year. And um, The Dream. Mm. And I was like, you know, they were all in the room. They just came to visit. And uh, I was like, hold on, wait a minute. We got me, you, and you in here. You think I'm going to let y'all up out this room before I give me a record? Cut that piano off. And um, we wrote a record that night, which ended up being the title track to the album. And what's the name of that song? Just checking. All right. <laughs> you see, I see what you tried to do. Just checking. <laughs> do you, when you say we write, do you still write? Do you go pen to paper? Sometimes. Oh, okay. Sometimes. Or, and you will type? On the, on the phone because sometimes if I don't I'll forget what I said right. I'm more of like a freestyler you know like I hear the beat I like it or you play some chords I like them cut the mic on let me see what comes out that's actually how I did uh, Made For Me mm. I heard Ooh. the track it was just piano um, and I was like let me just let me just go and I started like line for line uh, writing that song does it feel like it write itself? yes yeah I always say that like the song let the song tell you what it wants to be. Don't put yourself in it. Like, I, I kind of look at it as like, um, I'm a translator. So, like, that's why I read a lot. So I can have a big vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So whatever feeling the track is making me feel, I can translate it onto the mic using, you know, my repertoire. Like, my experience. Like, oh, this feels like it should be the hook. Mm. This feels like it should be... The pre-chorus, think it needs a bridge, you know. And then, obviously, I always write about love. And, like, that's just who I am. It's very rare that you'll catch me saying anything dark or super negative. And even if even if I am talking about something that's, like, really real and heavy, there's still a lightness to it. Mm -hmm. um, right. Because I, I don't allow myself to, like, be sad or cry for more than, like, five minutes. Now, And you're married as well. Do you run songs past... Your husband? No. No? No. Because I'm like, I don't need you to tell me mm. that is good or not, but I like it. That's enough. Hey, man, and like I was telling you, I was looking at this Rick Rubin interview, and he said, you you know, you create and you write for your audience last. And when he broke that down, I was like, dude, I can understand that. Because if you start going out saying, oh, what do they want to hear? What, are, what You know, like, we'll come to the song. We'll come to the song, and if it's something that that you feel, it'll tap into our emotions as well. Like I'm telling, you, and back to that hours and hours. That like I don't know why, but that's a special song for me because it's something that my daughter mm -hmm. enjoyed, and you know she was going through like anxiety, and it was like music that that really helps her. And so to see her just sitting there and and loving good music, and that was another one that that kind of felt like it wrote itself. Mm -hmm. And how 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 was that process with? I was without? washing dishes. Damn, I washed dishes. I cleaning, so I was like, let me just put some music on to pass the time. Um, I went on YouTube and typed in like R and B type beat, and that was like the third one I played. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, what is that? And um, I like you know with my elbow, paused it, rewound it. And I just started freestyle. It took me like 20 minutes. So it was an internet YouTube beat? Yes. Jesus Christ. Yep. 
So that's the other thing, too. I think, like, a lot of people see you successful and they think it's all, you know, shrimp and lobster towers. Mm -hmm. But it's like, no, at a certain point, you have to have the humility to just wipe the slate clean no matter how high you've gone and just, like, connect with what the new... I mean, because I had never found beats on YouTube before. Right. And I was like, well, let me just let me just see what's out there. Um, and you have to really just, like, understand it's not you. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because sometimes you get, like, real highfalutin, like, oh, oh, if it's not, you know, a Timbaland beat, I cannot do it. Gotcha. And it's not that, man. I'll take a track from somebody on Instagram. I can't do that anymore. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, but be I careful did. what you're I, saying. I, I meet... So many people, and if I like it, if it's good, it doesn't matter where it came from. And you still, and you still in the process. Even though you say you're done with the album, how do you know when you're done? Being so creative. Um, though? I mean, for this record, I felt like I didn't have anything okay. else to say. Good. I was like, I said everything that I wanted to say. How many do you would you place on the album? I believe we have twelve songs. That's... How many did you record? Oh, way, way yeah. many, <laughs> way more than that. <laughs> Originally, I had eighteen songs, and Tricky was like, "Ain't nobody finna listen to that." That's too many songs. Yeah. So. And you know what's crazy? It seems like we're coming back to, like, the 10s and 12s. The 14s, you know, but the 10s and 12s are becoming, like, the hot spots. Because at some some point, we're getting 22s. And and shout out to my man Chris. Chris Brown gave us 45. 45 records. Yeah, yes, man. Right. And I give him a hard time with that all the time. Like, Chris, I just finished the album, bro. I just I just <laughs> Took me two weeks. Yeah. No, it took me two years. <laughs> yeah, but no. Nah, so you saying probably... Solid dozen. Yeah, because we, we want you to play it all the way through, no skips. And we want you to play it again, you know, a couple times before mm -hmm. you get tired of it. Hey, and if you don't mind, do you have lupus? Yes. Can I ask, and how did you know? My sister is, is dealing as well. Um, I just kept going to different doctors like, what you is feeling this? something? I had like butterfly rash on my face. Um, I was having like really bad flare-ups. I mm -hmm. think one morning I woke up and I was just like all hunched over, like, you know, and I had and my roommate at the time like massaged me so that I could just stand up. Yeah. And then when I went, um, I went to the restroom and it was like, it ain't supposed to look like that, <laughs> you know. And so then I was like, I need to call somebody because this is crazy. And um, it was like, it was black. It was, it was like, mm -hmm. oh my God, like, am I dying? And then, um, I finally found a specialist out here, and they were like, oh, yeah, you have lupus. How many years ago was that? Oh. Or if? 2014. Really? Yeah. Do you still get aches or any kind of flare-ups? Yes. Or, yeah. When people get on my nerves. Damn. Yes. Man, I hope you don't, nothing happened. Hey, dude, can you imagine we go to take pictures? You're like, oh, I can't take this one. <laughs> I'm like, oh. back hurt. I'm like, oh, man. You know no, what the bad No, but well, let me rephrase that. When I allow right. people. You got to protect your energy yes. a lot? Um, I'd stay in the house. That's one way. Mm. And then, um, I try not to, I mean, Shaka and, and Jeff definitely try to keep me like, yo, just stay positive. Everything's going to work out. Cause I'll, I'll like analyze I me, mean, you know, I'll analyze things and be like, but why did they do this? Because that don't make no sense. I don't know. I, that ain't what I said. So why would he, you know what I'm saying? Like, did you take psychology? No. Okay, okay. I read a lot, though. Yeah, yeah, man. Because there's sometimes, man, where I even, like, I, and I tell people, my guy Jose, my wife, no, I think too much. I think too much. I'm up at night thinking too much. I already have the the answer before the question. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm I'm all over the place. Like, yeah, same. Is same. that Virgo thing or you just? <laughs> well, you know, most um, serial killers are Virgos. You know that? <gasps> no, they're not. You know that? Don't Look it up. Yeah. Can somebody yeah. Google oh, yeah. that? My mom's a Virgo. I think too. Uh, oh, yeah. Has your yeah, mom because we anyone? think we Not think we're of. so detailed to where, like, you know, yeah. before we take a step, we gonna analyze, like, yeah, but if I do this, this gonna happen. Yeah. Da, da, da. Damn. Mm -hmm. I do that. Yeah. Can you look look that up for sure? Yeah, like, yeah. Most common signs. I mean, this is the internet, so we can find it's a like lot Gemini of them. Like Gemini and Virgo, right? Forty six are Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, mm -hmm. Taurus, and Gemini. They're tied with twenty seven. Let me find a different one. Though. Okay, yeah. That's well, no, it. no, I'll take the one that doesn't lean towards Virgo. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. 
What, what, what are you on bullshit.com? No. Yeah, Give me a second. Yeah, I, do I don't want I don't want that title. Oh. Yeah, man. No, I love it because I'll be like, yeah, stop messing with me. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why you come home. Yeah. All the engineers are in, in place. You know what I'm saying? Husband, like, guess who's having salmon for dinner? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All uh, you had to do was say it one time. Believe that. Natalia, Natalia one, is still over there This checking. one says uh, Pisces, Cancer, Sagittarius, and Scorpio account for about 40% of serial killers. Mm-hmm. And the other 60 is Virgos. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, she was like, I'm going to be right. Else I'm going to kill everybody in here. Right. <laughs> she, she You're like, not saying the right thing. Yeah. I know. I'm sorry. I'm not finding it fast <laughs> enough. Wait, Natalia, okay. anything before we wrap up, baby girl? Um, Money Long, have you ever had a moment where you had writer's block? And if you did, like, how do you find yourself out of it? I did have a period where um, I felt like I had lost my mojo, mm. but it was because I was putting myself first. I was trying to think my way into a song. Mm. You know, like, what's a good concept? You know, just very songwritery. It's like, that's like the faux pas. Don't do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, once I took myself out of it and I was like, how do I feel today? What, is this, what does this track make me feel? Um, do I want to do piano? Mm. Do I want to do guitar? You know, I was a lot less serious about trying to be a professional writer. And let it c- kind of take you where it's leading you as well? As and, a- and, and that's when I stopped writing to things that I didn't like. Because, like, you know, in the grind, it's like sometimes you just, producers will give you their, like, D-list beat to mm. test you. Um, or, like, they'll just give you a loop and be like, yeah, figure it out. And so I stopped doing that. I started speaking up and be like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? I don't like this. Can you play something else? And they'll be like, but then when they finally do it, then I come up with something. They're like, oh, okay. Got so it. I don't, I, ne- I stopped wasting time on things that I had to kind of like conjure up um, ideas. And if I didn't, in the first 15 seconds, mm. if, if it didn't just kind of like, bleh, Come out, yeah. I'll just move on. Did when, you ever sorry, did you ever no find it hard as a female in a very male dominated industry yes. to get your voice heard and fight through it? Exactly. Yes, That's but exactly. then you you find ways. As in if you really are um how do I say? If you really like about it, you gonna find a way. Mm-hmm. So like I'll be in a room with certain people and I keep saying the right thing and it's just not clicking. And I'll just be like, what'd you say? D- didn't you say that? Yeah, that's what you said. And then you get your line. And it's like, I don't care if you don't give me the credit for it. Did we write the song? And is it great? Because mm. at the end of the day, I have a, a career too. And so if we leave this room and we don't have something that is, you know, viable that you can use, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then it's kind of like, well, now I got to wait for another opportunity to get the right artist with the right situation, with momentum, that's a priority. So you got to you got to figure it out. You got to make the best of it, or like you sneak back in the room when everybody's eating, <laughs> and you like freestyle <laughs> something, you know, and be like, yeah, yeah, press play. And then obviously, yeah, it, it doesn't matter how you get there. Once you get there, everybody's like, oh my god, this yeah. is amazing. And sometimes I can show you. Better than I can tell you is a real rule that applies to certain. Even with 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 money long, if you would have said this is what I'm doing and I'm going to disappear and I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, as opposed to organic and, I and did gene- many times. Yeah, and people were just like, right, okay, girl, can you come to this Ariana Grande session? Right. So I literally like, had right. to like disappear, turn my phone off. So when you say yeah. you disappear, turn your phone off, you weren't. So you weren't even working. Only with certain people. Right. So like Jeff Giddy, mm-hmm. who's nominated this year uh, for Victoria Monet on My Mama. Mm-hmm. Um, he was one of the ones that I would work for work with. But you weren't getting up just running and trying to find no. it. Got to be in the room and got to be at the camp and no. everything. Oh, my God. I hate a camp. Yeah. I hate <laughs> So you participated in those like songwriting camps? In the and- beginning, yeah, because you, you think you have to. And I did some really cool ones. Like I went to like this castle in France oh, geez, uh, with that? ASCAP. Um, one of the guys who used to manage Sting, Miles Copeland, I think his brother was the drummer in that band. Um, he bought a castle off of off of music, and um, or was it was it Sting or was it the Police? Sting one was of, in the police. One of them. Um, they made a lot of money, mm. and he bought a castle and he would host 
these songwriting camps, and then I did one in Bali. So sometimes if the location is good, right. I'll be like, let me think about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and how long are we going to be writing? Oh, okay, yeah. Well, keep me there two extra days. So I yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I stopped doing camps a long time ago. Do you when you right now? Because when you think like, oh, okay, I'm in Bali, I'm in a castle. People probably think you got to tap into there to, to tap in and have this great music, and it's just probably open you up. Can you write anywhere? Yes. Yeah. But I will say like, certain places carry a certain frequency. Got you. So like in London, my songs are always very serious and like kind of dark. That damn weather. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then like Miami feels a certain way. L.A. feels, like, very pop for me. Atlanta is where I go when I want to do, like, soul, R&B, mm. like, black music. Mm. Um, where else? Paris is really cool, like, when you want to do experimental things. Nashville is going to mm. have a certain flavor. Um, Bali definitely has, like, this very peaceful, calm um You write, energy. you go places to write songs. You go more places to write songs than we've been to just to... Have a vacation or just to chill. I mean, you know, the Bible says your gifts will make room for you. Mm. So, you know, I'm Hold not on for a second. Hold on for a second, my nigga. Does the Bible say that? Oh, you want to Google okay. that too? <laughs> you no, know, this this is my guy, Jose, and he's super religious. You know, and, and, and unless he go to like an Ice Cube concert, then you know how to edit out the cursing. But I call him my extension cord to the Lord. Like, he's closer you know what I'm saying? So he's my extension cord to the hey, Lord. Can you ask him who's going to um, win the Super Bowl? No. <laughs> the, the Lord, Jesus. man. The Lord. Jesus Christ? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Thank you, God! Get out of me, devil! Sorry. Serving Mike, I had to give it to you, serving Mike. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Are yeah, you going I want to play, place a couple bets. No, oh. I have my Valentine's Day show. It's annual. I do this my third year doing it um, in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Well, the last two years I did it here. So this year I'm doing it in Atlanta. So that's on the 14th, obviously. And I won't be able to rehearse if I go to Vegas. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Why Why uh, go see somebody else work when, and take away from your work? No, but I really do want to see Usher. Right. And he, like, I haven't been to Vegas yet, and he kept trying to get me to come. Oh, you oh. haven't been to his residency? No. Oh, my God, Money Long. Ridiculous. Sorry, Usher. Yeah, I'm man. coming, I'm coming. Man, we do now. Isn't he doing it again? He's, yeah. They said he, he going to pick back up, especially now. Yeah. Once, once this momentum with the Super Bowl, the, the new album, he released a track listing, it's going to be ridiculous. Do you have Do you have a football team? Um, I don't even know what they be doing on the field. Okay, you just want to bet. I have no idea. <laughs> she just wanted. She just wanted the Lord to help her to, yeah, yeah, yeah. for financial gain. You know, a couple extra dollars. Yeah, That's financial it. gain. I'll make the bets for you. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, you know how when people used to go to Vegas, you like, man, play this fifty for me. Yeah. yeah. Then you play, you like, man, you lost. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah you just put that in your pocket, right? Yeah, now. man. He, he gonna tithe ten percent of it too. So you got you got to watch out for it. So you you not you not tripping off of like the 49ers, the Chiefs, yeah. Well, Who's the going? Taylor Swifts, the the Kansas City <laughs> Swifts, yeah, the Swifty team. You know? I don't know nothing. Yeah, you just wanted to bet for financial gains. All right, and wanted you to do that with the Lord. See what I'm saying? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. You can go mess around. You do this thing. Oh, she using the cough button. <laughs> hey man, when she came in, she was like, all I gotta do is push this when I need to cough. You know? Are you a little under the weather right now? No. So I went out last night, and um, I definitely was. I'm not. Used to being in the smoke, you mm. know, in California, we like to yeah. partake in some things. Yeah, and man. so last night, I was like, oh, this is going to be a problem in the morning. Mm. Um, All that secondhand smoke. Yeah, huh? they was having a lot of fun. Secondhand. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know how that secondhand is. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. man, and you just in the room. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Can I'm you trying ever... to talk to people, and I'm like... <laughs> 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 you weren't at a place called the, uh, the Compound with Snoop, were you? Oh, no, Okay, no. yeah, because I almost no, died no. in there a couple times. <laughs> no. yeah, I've been doing Snoop for decades. I no, still I can't, I still I can't, can't hang tolerate out with it. Uncle Snoop. I can't do it. Yeah, man. So don't 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 even try there. And you were talking about the remix. Well, yeah, when when you mentioned oh, Usher God, about that remix man. coming together, what did it feel like to have hours someone hours. like Usher, who is a massive part of R and B, on your remix? Because I read you say he got in your way, but go ahead. We'll talk about that. <laughs> I didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. So just the same way that I didn't want to rest on my laurels with songwriting, I really was adamant about, I came this far, I invested all this money, um, and now I have this hit record. I want to take it as far as I can take it without 
you know, using someone else's mm. um, celebrity platform. I want to see how far I can go. Just for my own mental, gotcha. I need to do this on my own. And uh, I know if I would have put it out when he suggested it, which was like February um, of 2022, we recorded it. Uh, he wanted to put it out immediately. And I was like, just can let me right. let me think about it. And um, I just felt like if I do this with you now, it's gonna be your song. Yep. You know, and I I gotta I gotta have this for myself. And it wouldn't have gained the real legs too. Yeah, I mean, I think it probably would have like went maybe a lot bigger. And then obviously with him doing Super Bowl and like all this stuff now, it probably would have been a good look as far as like aesthetically and financially. But I needed to do it on my own. Right. Just to know that I could. And then once I got, you know, won the Grammy and everything, I was like, okay, we can put it out yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Oh, hello, Usher. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's go but ahead But he was very persistent. Out. He kept saying, like, I'm telling you, when you put that remix out. Um, so I appreciate him being patient with me for that. Yeah, and it, but it worked for you, too, though. And then plus, I think also, and I love Usher. That's That's been my dude for years. It would have been the topic of as soon as you sat down. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like yeah. we've been sitting here for a minute and we haven't said the usher. Mm -hmm. the re you know what I'm right. saying? So, and, and you want to create the narratives and your your own intro. You yes. know, and I think that's what you did. And the plus, plus, you know how to kind of put things down. And you 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 already created these not not these scary moments, but these walk away timing moments. And let, yeah, let I it need come to together. learn how to stand on my own two feet. You know, and mm -hmm. just like get my own experience and create my own world. So that, like, at the end of the day, if anything should ever falter, I'm good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not reliant on anyone else to pick me up. Man, well, I appreciate you coming into the neighborhood. I'm so grateful Come to on be now, here. Money Laws Finally. up in here. Finally, the door been open. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, because remember, I saw you no. a year ago at the uh, iHeart Awards. We met at the I, I remember. Did, and and I, I remember that. I came yeah. back. I said, no, nah, damn. And I was like, I got to come. And now I'm finally here. There it is right there. It took you a year to get here. You been she crazy, man. Nah, but thank you for coming into the neighborhood, Queen. I appreciate oh, thank you. Thank you. Money long in the neighborhood, big boys neighborhood. <laughs>